Thank you so much, uh, Shiloh Choir, for that wonderful praise. And we are in the Christmas season. Today is the 23rd anniversary of Shiloh. And really, uh, every day needs to be Christmas. Every day, Jesus needs to come into our hearts. Uh, Jesus is the true light. And he came into this world that was in darkness. And we need to receive that light every day. And so I pray that every day is Christmas and that you may be able to be full of light and full of joy, thanksgiving. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, through today's main passage, as our General Secretary David Sohn has read, uh, Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, I want to share a message titled, What Must We Do in a Season of Transition? What Must We Do in a Season of Transition? So in our lives, we go through seasons of transitions. We go through seasons of training, and there are times where God takes us into places that uh, we are going for the first time. And so there is a, a sense of anxiety. We don't know where we're going. We don't know when uh, we will be moving on from the place that we are at. And it's a, a strange place of transition. We have God's promise. We know where we need to go. And it's not the place that we are at. And so there is much frustration because uh, we need to go to the next level. We need to go to the next place, a new dimension. But we're still in a place of transition. And it can be very frustrating. So, for instance, if you're in the army and you know, you're ready for a promotion and you, know, you need to uh, serve well and, and be acknowledged by your superiors and so forth, and so you're ready for this promotion, but it's a, a strange uh, time of transition. And so what do we need to do in a season of change, in a season of transition? The Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years, and now they were going into the land of Canaan, crossing the Jordan River into a new place that they had not been into. And so this crossing of the Jordan River is a time of transition, a time of change for the people of God. As we end the year 2021, we are ending this year, and now we are going into a, a new season, a new year, 2022. And especially because now the 11th book, part, uh, the second part, um, the Zerubbabel's Temple, and also the consecrated genealogy of the returnees has been come out. And now, through this book that has been launched, it marks a, a new time in the history of redemption. Now we are going forward into a new time, into a new season. And so, in our personal lives, in our families, in our workplaces, or if you're a student, what do we need to do in a time of change, in a time of transition? And so that's what we want to cover today. And first of all, we must have a period of consecration. So the first point is, we must have a period of consecration. So what is consecration? It's preparing ourselves through the word and through prayer. It's going out to morning prayers. And it's preparing ourselves physically and spiritually to move on to the next level, to the new dimension, a new level. And so if you look at Joshua chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, our main passage, then Joshua rose early in the morning, and, he all, and all of the sons of Israel sent out from Shittim and came to the Jordan, and they lodged there before they crossed. And it came about at the end of three days that the officers went through the midst of the camp. So there was a period of a three-day consecration. Exodus chapter 19, verse 10 through 15 also tells about a three-day period of consecration where the Israelites were told to have consecration. It says in uh, Exodus chapter 9, verse 10 through 15, God told the people to get ready for on the third day, God was going to come down and God told them to wash their garments and let them get ready because the Lord was going to come down and do mighty works before their eyes. And so this is in Exodus chapter 19, verses 10 through 15. 
And God promised to come down, but He commanded the people to consecrate themselves. You see, when we come into a new place and we come closer to God, God wants us to become closer to Him through holiness. We need to become more consecrated. We need to become more holy. We need to have a life of godliness. And so, if you've always done, uh, if you do what you've always done, you'll always get the same results. But if you want to go to a new level of growth, you have to start coming out of our comfortable lives. And we need to be able to consecrate ourselves and come closer to God through the Word and through prayer. And so this is a, a time of preparation, a time where we be, cleanse ourselves. We need to cleanse ourselves to come closer to God, to come higher so that God will be able to use us, to, so that God will be able to lift us up and be able to use us as His vessels. So just like Daniel, if you look at Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 and the following, Daniel had a period of three years of training. But also, they were tested for 10 days, and they only ate vegetables, and they only, ate, and they only drank water. But this was a time of testing and consecration, so that they could be proven to be worthy, to be able to be lifted up. And so, in the same way, we need to prepare ourselves through godliness, through consecration, through the word and through prayer. And when we become more consecrated, I believe that God will take us to the new place, a new place where God wants us to enjoy his presence, to enjoy the blessings of God. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Secondly, what do we need to do? We need to set our eyes on the word. We need to set our eyes on the word. So sometimes when we live our spiritual lives of faith, we want to look at people. We want to hold on to people because we think that the people will bring us into a better place. But the Bible tells us that we cannot trust people. We cannot hold on to people or to be able to lean on them. But our trust must only be on the Lord. Our eyes must focus on the word alone. So Joshua chapter 3, verse 3, 4, it says, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God, with the Levitical priest carrying it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. And then it says in verse 4, However, there shall be a distance between you and it, and it a distance of about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you shall go. For you have not passed this way before. So God told the people to look towards the covenant of the ark. And that covenant of the ark is representing the word of God. And so we cannot look to the left. We cannot look to the right. We cannot look at people who, uh, who think, we think that will carry us into you know, um, a better place. But God tells us to keep our eyes on the word of God alone. And so in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, 6, it says, Trust in the Lord your God with all of your heart. So trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. And it says, In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So God is saying, trust in God. Do not trust in man. But trust in Him and do not lean on your own understanding. Don't try to calculate, you know, if I hold on to this person or if I, you know, do well uh, for this person and try to calculate. Don't lean on your human understanding. But God is saying, trust completely in Him and acknowledge Him in all ways. So how can we acknowledge Him? We pray and we, we seek the Word for answers. And He will guide us. He will lead us in our lives of faith. Sometimes we don't know where we're going. But God will lead us to the place where He wants us to go. And we need to trust Him for that. Psalms chapter uh, 119 verses 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light to my path. So God's word is the only standard that we need to go by. His word is the lamp and the light to guide our lives. And so we cannot move on feelings or emotions. But the standard that we need to move is by God's word. When we pray, we pray through God's word. When we receive answers, we receive answers through God's word. And so God's word needs to be the light and lamp for our lives. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, we look at the things that are invisible because the things that are visible are temporary. But the things that are invisible, they are eternal. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 also says that, Therefore, since you have a, such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run the race with endurance, the race that is set before us. And then in verse 2, what, what does it say? Let's read it together. Ready? Begin. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. So it says, fixing your eyes on him. So what does that mean? We need to put our eyes only on him and keep it there. Fix it there and hold it there. Look only upon God, upon Father. And when we do, then He will guide us. And so this is a, a great lesson that we need to learn. And it, in today's passage, it also says to follow at a distance. Why? Because first of all, we need to revere God's Word. We need to understand the holiness of God's Word. But also, we cannot go ahead of the Word. Sometimes uh, we get ahead of God. We think that we should be doing something and we get ahead of God and we rush ahead out of sync, out of timing with God. But God wants us to move according to His pace, according to His timing. And so God set a distance and He doesn't want us to go forward ahead of the Word, but He wants us to follow the Word in the timing that God has given us. And so sometimes, you know, there are times where we should... We feel that we should be going forward, but God keeps us back. Sometimes we want to rest, but God says, keep going. And so that's what walking with God is. We need to walk with God in His timing, God's timing. In His time, He makes all things beautiful. There's a song, right? All things become beautiful in His time. Sometimes we want to rest, but God says, go. Sometimes we want to go, but God says, stop. And we need to be obedient to God's command. So I pray that as we live our lives of faith, may we fix our eyes upon the word. You know, we need to let go of all of our greed and all of our uh, vanities and put it before God. Pour out our souls, entrust it to Him, and put our eyes upon the Lord. And when we do, I believe that He will guide us the word will be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I pray that this may be true, that the light of Christ may be able to guide you, that the light of Christ may be able to shine the path before you. Sometimes it's dark. We don't know where to go, what to do. And, you know, and it's very confusing. But the light of God will lead your path. And please believe that. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. And last, third point, what should we do? We must make markers. We must make markers. Remembering the grace of God. So we, make, we need to make markers. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, the Israelites were commanded by God to set up 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan River. And also God told them to set 12 stones in Gilgal. So Joshua 4, 9 says, Then Joshua set up 12 stones, where? In the middle of the Jordan, at the place where the feet of the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing. And they are there to this day. And then in Joshua chapter 4, verse 20, it says that they, those 12 stones which they had taken from the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. So there were two places that they set up 12 stones. 
One was in Gilgal, and one was in the middle of the Jordan River. And why did they do that? Because the 12 stones in the Jordan River represented the past Israel, the past life. And so we need to make markers in our lives, remembering the past, remembering the grace that God has given to us. And we need to make a marker. We need to remember that forever. And so God told them to make markers, this memorial, so that when the children ask, hey, what do these stones mean? And the parents could teach their children through these markers that God led us in the wilderness for 40 years by the pillars of fire and cloud. God led us with his mighty hand. God led us through the hornets and his majesty and terror. And they could teach their children those things. And God set up memorial days. You know, the Passover, the, he set up the Feast of um, Leaven and the Feast of the First Fruits. And all of these feasts were markers. There were me memorial days to remember the grace that God has uh, given to us. So we need to remember the past, the grace that God has given to us. Let's remember in this past year, what kind of blessings and grace has God given to us? And we need to remember that. For instance, uh, I always remember every year, June 19th, from 2005, that's when I got ordained as a pastor. That is a marker. Or when our uh, elderses and our ordained deacons, you know, you were ordained this year on June 25th. Uh, not June 25th, but in the month of June. And that is a marker. So when you have these markers, you can remember God's grace. So thinking about this past year, make those markers, make those special days and mark them on your calendar and remember them because they are markers to, to remember the grace of God. And not only that, but remember the grace of God that has been given to you in your whole life. So now you have, you know, a few days until the new year. And on Friday, we will do the New Year's Eve service. And we only have a few days to think about this past year. Settle accounts with God. And remember the grace that God has given to you this year. And even when things have not gone well, we still need to give thanks. We need to give thanks to God for life, for the blessings of the grace of Jesus Christ, the blood on the cross to forgive our sins. That in itself is something to give praise and thanks to God. So we need to make these markers. Also, the Israelites set up markers in Gilgal. And this is like a, a new point, uh, a, a start that marked uh, their journey. It's a new start. And so we're celebrating uh, anniversary today the 23rd anniversary of Shiloh. And the, this is a marker. Anniversary is a marker. We remember how God has started this, this department and we were able to do God's work around the world. So remember the grace that God has given to you and set up new markers to start a new beginning. Make, res make new resolutions, determinations, you know, reflect upon your life. Have that quiet time and, and pray before God. This is what I want to do in the new year. God, lead me. And when you do, those will become markers to remember the grace of God. And I believe that when you do that, God will be pleased with you. And when you settle accounts with God, God will say, good and faithful servant. And, he's, and he will say, share in the master's joy. And I pray and blesses upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, as a conclusion, I will wrap up my message today. Today, uh, we are talking about what to do in a season of transitions. And uh, as a conclusion, we need to have a circumcision in our hearts. And we need to settle accounts with God. We need to have a spiritual circumcision in our hearts. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Break up your fallow ground. And God says, Circumcise your hearts. Now, the Israelites, 
they circumcised the second generation uh, in Gilgal. And they did this before they made the conquest of the land of Canaan. And so we too need a circumcision, a circumcision of the heart. We need to be uh, renewed. We need to be made into a new person every day. And so this circumcision is repenting, repenting. Circumcision and being born again is talking about repentance, settling accounts with God. We need to repent for the sins that we have committed before God. Repent of the sins that you don't even know about. Sometimes there are sins in our lives that we are not even aware of. But we need to even repent of those types of sins as well. And when we do, there is a spiritual circumcision that takes place. And we become sealed by God. We become the true children of God when we are circumcised spiritually. So in the next few days, settle accounts with God. Repent before God for all of your wrongdoings. And when you do, I believe that God will make you into a new person. And only the new person, only those who have been circumcised, can be tr the true children of Abraham. And only the true children of Abraham can go into the land of Canaan and conquest it because it is theirs by promise. So we need to be born again. We need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we need to be baptized in the Word. We need to have a spiritual circumcision so that we can become Abraham's offspring. And when we are Abraham's offspring, then we can go out into the world as his children and rule and conquest all of the nations by spreading the Word of God. So I pray that you may be able to become truly Abraham's offspring. May you become Abraham's sons and daughters so that you may be able to be lifted up above all of the nations. Your businesses, your children may grow up and become the head and not the tail. May they be blessed going in and going out. May they be blessed rising up and laying down. And may God be with them wherever they go, like Emmanuel, Jehovah Shammah. May God be with us in all the aspects of our lives. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the grace today, the last Sunday, the 52nd week of the year 2021. And now we are ready to start the new year. Father, as we go through a period of change and transition, may we purify ourselves. May we be able to set our eyes on the word. And may we be able to walk in accordance with your timing and be able to be truly spiritually circumcised so that we may be able to walk forward into the new place that you have prepared for us. Father, there are people who are going through hardships, who are hurting and who are going through pain. And Father, please touch their hearts. And we also ask that you bless our businesses and the work that we are doing. And so that we may be able to be a source of blessing. So that we may be able to serve and to be able to devote ourselves unsparingly for the church and for each other. We thank you in all these things we pray. In Jesus' precious name with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's give glory to God.